In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the new Start Workflow node and the new Started By Workflow node. And essentially, these two nodes talk together. So when you have one application where the trigger is happening, so in this application, I'm essentially link linking this trigger up here to this action here. And these two nodes act as a bridge. So in another way, you could think of it as you're just putting down a button click here with a send email action here. And all it's doing is this here, this node here is acting as a bridge with this node to link this action to this trigger. And this is essentially the line that it's taken. What this allows you to do is that it means you can start a workflow from a completely separate application. Uh, it doesn't need to be linked in any way, and it means that you can trigger a variety number of workflow instead of having to trigger each individual workflow in individual records. So what that means is, as an example, in this business application I have here, I may have a variety of decisions at the bottom under each business so I could have say 30 decisions here if I wanted to trigger those to send a update to the owner uh, a request for them to update the decision I'd have to go into each record and click that button individually but you know that could take a long time so with this new workflow is I can just click this one button up here at the top and if I use the correct filter on this start workflow node here, I can then trigger an update across all of these records without needing to go into each individual one. Now this is an example where I've got these child decisions under a parent business record. But like I said, you don't need to have these linked applications in any way. This could just be a lookup application link or, or just something completely separate. So, to start with this one, I will show you how to set up this request button uh, workflow and then how to set up this trigger workflow, sorry, this action send email workflow here. So to begin, you need to start at the end, which can be confusing, but you need to go into the application where you're going to have the action. So in this one, I've got the RAID application where the decision is. I then go into it and I select the started by workflow trigger. And then <clears throat> I just need to put in the trigger identifier. So this is the name of the trigger. So when you look up into this application and you select this, <clears throat> this started by workflow node here, you need to make sure you have a target node title that you can remember and understand. And it's obvious, not just to yourself, but also other app builders. So I put in the trigger identifier. I then put in the source app where it's going to be triggered from, which, it, like I said, is this business application here, and click OK. Then I want to add in the action I want it to complete, which is a send email. This is an email that goes to the owner. Uh, I then just put you know a standard message in, so update requested for the decision, and then please put an update on this record as soon as possible with a link to the record here. So quite a simple setup. Once that's done, just click save, and then you want to go to your pair, your your source application. So this is the business application, which in this case is the parent application. You then want to create another workflow. Once you start this, you then want to select your trigger. So like I said, mine is going to be off of this button. So I need to select a button click trigger here. And then I need to go to action and I need to select the start workflow action and put it onto this trigger. And then in that, I wanna select the target application where I'm looking for this started by workflow. So this was the RAID application. And then I wanna select the node, which was request update. And then I wanna put in my target filter. Now this bit can be a bit confusing. So the main thing you want to do is select, right, what decisions do I want to request an update on. So first I need to select the RAID type to be decision as RAID is risk action insight decision. I wanna make sure I'm not doing this for any risks, actions or insights, just the decisions. And then I want to make sure the status is either set to do or is in progress. 
I don't request any updates on decisions that have already been completed. And then this next bit is a little bit more confusing. So, where I mentioned earlier, these apps don't need to be linked, which means beforehand where you have a target filter like this for say a child update or anything you are putting a filter into will only look into the child records linked to that record. But in this case, because there is no essentially child relationship or parent relationship, you need to put that into the filter. So what I've done is I've created a business ID up in this application. And then when a decision is created down here, it will then pull the business ID into this record. So when I go to the filter, I can then put in source.businessID is equal to business ID. And what that does is it makes sure that only the records that are, have the same business ID as the parent record here are looked at in this filter. because so you don't want to trigger any other decisions related to any other projects or businesses, only the ones that are linked to this record. So that's what I've done here. Then I click OK, then I save that, and that's it. You just add in your button, you link this button clicked up to your button here, and then when I click Request, it will then check all the records in my RAID application that are a decision, that are either set to the do or in progress, and have the same business ID as this record that it's being triggered from. I uh, hope that helps and I hope if you have any questions do let us know and uh, let us know how you, you, you intend to use this yourself. Thank you very much for watching.